Hello, everyone. My name is Paris. I'm a product manager at Google. And I'm Diego, a software engineer. Together with Paris, we lead the UI tools team in Android Studio. We're excited to share the multi-model Gemini features we've been working on in Android Studio. Today, I'll introduce the feature concepts so that you're familiar with them. Then Diego will walk through demos. After today's talk, you will know how to leverage AI in your UI development workflow. So what are some new AI features for UI development we're showing today? First and foremost, Gemini in Android Studio is an AI coding companion that helps you build high quality apps faster. Beyond the chat, our team has been incorporating Gemini in Android Studio, service with actions such as code transform or rename variables. We want to provide AI assistance at every stage of the software development life cycle. For today, we'll focus on UI development. In fact, here's a typical simplified overview of the UI development life cycle, all the way from when a designer hands off design to a developer to when a UI code gets implemented and finally shipped in the hands of end users, user feedback, then more optimizations and iteration back to the designer. We have listed out the different tasks that developers go through via collecting from UXR. It's a generalization because in reality, as I personally know, this process is not linear. But the idea is we took some of these subtasks and experimented with Gemini capabilities and built features that we think can really help improve the productivity in this workflow and tasks. And some AI capabilities we came up with are multi-model chat, preview generation, and transform UI, as well as existing Gemini and Studio features that we think can also be leveraged to complete these subtasks. For example, in the beginning stages, a developer may get design assets, design system, things, colors, and a screen design, and there's some discussion on the spec. Then as a developer, you may do some research on what framework would be the best to achieve the UI result, compose, we're using existing components and build new ones. With the initial stages of the UI development lifecycle, we introduce multi-model and Gemini chat. We want to tackle reducing the time to receive and understand spec from designer. We imagine developers can upload spec and ask questions and brainstorm. For example, what composables should I use looking at the spec? Code generation from design artifacts, image to compose, theme creator, extract color assets, and more. I wanted to share a little behind the scenes. We work closely with the model team to help us improve Gemini model capabilities to allow AI to see and understand the uploaded images. Gemini analyzed visual elements such as layouts, buttons, and text, among other elements. We refined its training using reinforced learning with AI feedback. An AI judge evaluates the generated code and assess if the code adheres to best practices. The second bucket we looked at here was when developer had to start coding and setting up the environment in your IDE. As you start iteration, you may want to set up tools like previews to help with quick iterations. With Compose Preview Generation with Gemini, we aim to reduce the time to set up development environment we want you to get into UI iterations quickly, so once you have composables ready, you can create previews with one click. Then, with some back and forth validation from design to developer, you may start to check for any common bugs, optimize for performance, maybe extend it to make sure that the UI scales across different device types. Then finally, send to check in the code. With Transform UI with Gemini, we want Gemini to also act as a thinking partner with you through the UI iteration step. How to align these two buttons, for example. And finally, we also think of existing Gemini and Android Studio features like prompt library, where you can add reusable prompts like I always use material three or using the app file and context drawer to add the correct context like your theme file, your design components, so Gemini can answer questions based on the right context. All right, now that you have some context of what these features are and why we built them, let me head over to Diego to the most exciting part, looking at some demos. Thank you, Paris. 
I'm going to show you a few demos of the features that Paris has shown. These features will help you speed up your development flow while creating your UI. The first feature I'm going to show you is the Generate Preview feature. Adding a preview annotation is simple enough and does typically not take a long time. However, previews will typically need data, so you can see realistic examples of your components. With this feature, you can create the preview and populate it with data in seconds. Let me show you how it works. Here, I have a small sample component that shows news. It contains all the fields that you will typically expect for a car showing the news, like date, title, author, etc. It does not have a preview, so let me generate one now. Clicking in the Gemini menu in the editor, now we have the Generate Preview option. If I click it, it will send the query, and after a short time, you will see the new preview div. This looks good, so I'm going to go ahead and accept the changes. Now it builds, and now we have a function in preview. One thing that you'll notice is that the car was automatically populated with sample data for the different fields. This works for simple types, but it will also create classes if you pass more complex types here. It helps having documentation of the inputs that your composable takes to ensure that Gemini generates good quality sample data. OK, so now that we have a preview, let's ask Gemini to modify it to make it a bit more realistic. I'm going to use the Generate Code feature here. I can go to the Gemini menu again, and after clicking Generate Code, let me ask Gemini to change the news to be more realistic and about a movie premiere. Same as before, you can see that Gemini has given me a diff. It looks good, so I'm going to accept it and done. The preview has refreshed, and the card looks a bit better now. Now, using this same feature, I'm going to make one last tweak. I'm going to ask Gemini to generate 10 different articles for me and a different preview for my screen. You can see how it was really easy for me to get a couple of previews up and running in a few seconds. Now I want to show you how to use Gemini to help you prototyping UIs very quickly, specifically how to create a new component similar to the one that I've shown you in the last couple of steps. I have this prompt saved here that asks Gemini to create a new news card for me. It gives Gemini basic guidance on what I want to display and also how to populate the resources initially. Once I have it in the query box, I press send, and Gemini starts immediately generating the code for me. That looks reasonable. It even created a preview for me. I'm going to click the Create New File button in the code snippet, build, and check that the preview looks good. OK, I'm quite happy with that. I can even use the Interactive Preview feature in the Compose Preview to verify that the card looks as I want it. Just one more example to show the power of this for prototyping. I have this second prompt that asks Gemini to create a sign screen. Similar to before, I'm telling Gemini the fields that I want. Now, if I click Submit, that looks good, so I'm going to add this. If I go to the Interactive Preview, I can check that the input works. However, it does let me type incorrect emails here. OK, let's try to ask Gemini to implement the email validation. If I type this prompt here and send it, you can see how Gemini returns this reasonable modification. Let's try it out. As you can see, now, after I asked Gemini, it provided me with a reasonable suggestion. I'm going to accept it and verify it again in the interactive preview. If I now type an invalid email, great, it has showed the validation error. This is one of the ways that you can use now Gemini to speed up your UI development and help you to save some time while building your new application. Now, I wanted to show you another useful feature that we recently introduced. You've seen that I've been using different prompts, and in each one, I had to specify a number of things that are common to all my application screens. Those can be, for example, which logo to use or the name of the company. We have introduced the use of rules that will now allow you to specify context that is common to all your queries. Here, I have a file that contains a number of things that I want to remain constant across queries. For example, I added the package name, where to find the company logo, and the name of the company. I can now copy this, open the Gemini settings panel, and add those into the rules section. So they apply to all my queries. Once this is done, if you open the context drawer, you'll see that they have been applied. 
I'll now ask Gemini to create a splash screen for my application. I click Send and wait a little bit. You can see now that the screen we came up with was respecting these rules. I would like the company name to be below the logo, so let me fix that. Because the company name is part of the context, I do not need to specify it. This is very useful when you want to use some common context or add additional information into your queries. You can also always check what context is being shared by using the context drawer here. Now, on to one of the most exciting features, the multimodal support for Gemini in Android Studio. This just opens a number of possibilities that will help you build UIs faster. For example, one thing that I think that is very cool is the ability for Gemini to understand and translate images into code. For example, I have this image here that I drew earlier that resembles a calculator. If I add this into the prompt and I ask Gemini to produce the code for it, let's see what the output is. OK, the code looks reasonable. It seems to contain all the buttons. Let's add this into a new file and see. Let's build it. As you can see, in two seconds, I came up with a reasonable approximation for a calculator UI. If I now go into interactive mode, you see that the functionality is not there, but the layout is mostly correct. Now, let's see if I can get it to work. If I use the generate code feature now to ask Gemini to implement the basic functionality for addition and send it, you see that the answer looks like it's trying to implement the basic addition. If I accept it and go back to interactive mode, you can see that now I have very basic addition functionality. I wanted to show you one more example on how powerful this can be. Here, I have this example of a list of a number of common components using my default theme application. Now, one thing I can do is to ask Gemini to change the theme to match a set of colors in an image. For example, I have this set of colors that I wanted to use. If I attach to my prompt and send it, we see that Gemini has a suggestion of things to change. If I accept it and wait for a second, now you see that the theme is updated to match the colors. That looks quite nice. And that's a quick tour of the features in Android Studio that can help you improve your workflow while working on your UI. Thanks, Diego. That was so fun. Hopefully, you are all excited to try it yourself and tell us what you think. Now, I'm going to spend some time talking about what's in the future for us. Going back to this UI development workflow, you may notice that the current features focus a lot on the beginning stages. And we also want to start expanding beyond that. For example, we're experimenting with, can Gemini help resolve some common UI bugs? Say if you use the UI check mode, and found that some of the UI has accessibility issues. Can we leverage your projects to help you resolve the issue? Or if you finish implementing this UI for mobile and are being asked to build the same UI for adaptive or smaller screen like watches, can we help you quickly get started? Or can Gemini help generate the icons and imagery you may need for particular scenarios? Beyond new features, we also want to improve the accuracy and context relevant to our existing features. Thus, we are starting to explore and experiment with agents to see if there are ways we can loop till errors are fixed. For example, for tasks such as preview generation, to loop the results until preview renders. Similar for image to code, we want to loop until the input image matches the end results previews. Beyond UI development, We've been hearing from developers in large companies that they've been wanting to bring Gemini and Android Studio to their organization. And we've been hard at work making sure to build a set of tools that grow to meet their needs. Unique to Gemini and Android Studio for Business, we've added additional tools to customize the AI for your team's internal code base, integrated best-in-class management capabilities, and provided privacy and IP guarantees that ensure you can adopt AI without worry. If interested, Go to the link in the description. Thank you for listening to us today. Let us know if you have any questions. And that's what we wanted to share with you. If you haven't already, now is the time for you to download the latest version of Android Studio and to incorporate these new AI features into your UI development workflow. As always, we appreciate any feedback on things that you like 
any bugs that you discover, or any new features that you would like to see in future versions of Android Studio. Remember to like and subscribe, and share with a fellow Android app developer. See you next time. <laughs>